interesting, Mary Queen of Scots acknowledged to Shane's brother, Hugh. Hugh Shane had a brother called Hugh. He was killed and he was very close to, to Shane. He got killed and, you know, fighting for Shane. But he used to always send him across to Scotland as his emissary to uh, Mary Queen of Scots, who was Mary Stuart and actually was sitting on her throne of Scots in Edinburgh. And she always acknowledged that she was a liege man, that she was subservient to the O'Neills. Did you know that? I did. You did. did. Good man. Good man. <laughs> he would know that. But that is a fact. Now that's very, see, that's very, very interesting that they were, in fact, kings of Scotland. And James I, of course, of England was a steward. You know that the Home Row yeah. went to Scotland with a battalion to help in their insurrection. It's not I think, by Willie Wallace. Oh, indeed he did. And yes. Yeah, and very early. That was against, against Longshanks. That's right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, the Irish always did that. The Irish always... In fact, there was more Irish died at... Um, at Bannockburn, uh, than than than, I, than than Scots, so to speak. So, in a way, it the Gallo glass were not really Gals, <laughs> although they. It's just like the Irish consider us. I was born there, but now I'm Gal. You know, you're a Yank. You know what I mean. Once you've been away for a long time, especially a generation or two, no matter how Irish you may consider yourself, you're still a foreigner. So, in that sense. They were foreigners, but they weren't really foreigners. And so they were very Irish. I don't think that any of the Picts, that, of the race of Picts ever came and fought in Ireland. And look at their names, you know, like Ma McDonald's, Ma Ma McShane's, you know, they were all Max. Colin Kidd, too, who spent, uh, as you know, a long time in Iona. Sure. And uh, his brother, or cousin, was Fergus, king of the Dorado. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. And in Ireland. Yeah. yeah, that's right. In Meath, in, in, in Kells. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely, very close indeed. Um, and if he hadn't screwed up, he could well have been the O'Neill and the head of the O'Neills. But uh, <coughs> I'm looking at whoever it is. Um, so anyway, more interesting questions like that. I, li I like this. And it's the most interesting part. The greatest gift the O'Neill's ever gave to Adam was St. Patrick. Ah. Because he was taken Nile. prisoner under, under Nile, and he returned as the bishop under Leary. Well, no, that's arguable. Whether it was the greatest, <laughs> um, you know. Which is arguable? Which is arguable? That they? Patrick was the greatest gift that ever came into Ireland. <laughs> 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 See, I'm near the door. It's open here. I can take off. <laughs> no, what part did the O'Neills play in the Battle of Kinsale? Did you say that in the What part did the O'Neills play in the Battle of Kinsale? Well, of course, the commander, the commander was um, the O'Neill. Um, I am not a great fan of Hugh O'Neill. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I think he should have won a, one can sail, for one thing. Um, and the reason he didn't win can sail was because he didn't fight as an Irishman. He didn't understand the Irish way of fighting. And he tried to make the Irish, uh, the, 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 the O'Neills, into a British army. That's not the way they fought. And that's why they lost. And especially when O'Donnell, uh, Hugh Rowe, uh, O'Donnell, but Hugh O'Donnell was commanding the O'Donnells and they were separate. But it wouldn't have mattered. You see, they made a big issue of the fact that the two didn't work together. They didn't work together because they were using two different ta ta tactics. So Hugh O'Neill was trained under the English system and he was fighting like Charles Blount, which was uh, the... Um, uh, uh, what do you call him? Um, oh my God! Uh, Rain is um, uh, the um, Mountjoy, Lord Mountjoy. Charles Blount was his real name. I always call him Char Charles, but his real uh, Lord Mountjoy. Um, and that's why they got stumbled all over each other, and they were running around because they, they didn't know how to react. Whereas uh, 
when the Irish took off running, they weren't retreating. They were more than likely leading a cavalry, an English cavalry charge into a bog where they could kill them. All kinds of stuff, you see. But that became totally confused at Kinsale. So I blame him for um, fighting, trying to lead an Irish army as an English continental army. Because he had served in the Netherlands and he was essentially a, a continental type of kind of thing. Shane would never have done that. The other thing that... Yeah. Why, why did they even want to group the English out at that time? Pardon? Now, you, you said that he was reared as an Englishman. Why did he turn coat, so to speak, and, and uh, want to rouse the English? Well, that's a good question. And he was a very reluctant rebel. He did not embrace rebellion easily. Remember now, his first experience in Ireland after coming back from London was... Uh, w riding around Munster trying to kill the Earl of Desmond during the Second Desmond Rebellion, uh, thinking very much as an English officer. Um, when he went back up to Tyrone and Dungannon, um, he expected that they would treat him with respect, and they didn't. They treated him like an Irishman. And he suffered terribly under uh, Bingham and uh, later Sussex um, and Essex uh, and it was that that turned him and in fact they made his life miserable and they dispossessed him of a great deal of uh, what he thought was his so yeah he was Earl of Tyrone under their law and the O'Neill under the Irish law but they were taking off, taking it off him as quick as they could, including already planting people in his land. So he did it for the very same reason that a nobleman in Cornwall would have done it, or in Lancashire would have done it. It became intolerable. What London and the Crown was doing to him became intolerable. So that was the great weakness of O'Neill, that because he was being badly treated by the crown, endeared him to the Irish peasantry and the Irish soldiers, and they thought, well, now he's one of us because they're kicking his ass just better than kick ours. <laughs> and they figured that he was therefore an Englishman, an Irishman, but he wasn't, you see. And when he led them, and when the moment, the critical moment came, he wasn't an Irish leader. Uh, the other thing that... Um, and how were they able to align themselves with Spain? Why did they choose Spain to help them out? Um, well... Again, uh, that goes back to religion. It had, it had absolutely nothing to do with anything other than religion. And again, for some extraordinary reason, because of the way they were trained, the O'Neills were very religious. And Hugh was a very religious man and died in Rome and was a very religious man, as had been Shane. Now, uh, he was very loyal to Rome. And at that time in England, it was not death to be orthodox, to be Catholic. The Tudors had by no means subdued uh, England to Protestantism, to reformism. So he, was, he didn't have to hide his Catholicism. He was a very staunch Catholic. Now, uh, what he did when he started to feel the enmity of the crown and who were trying to take his lands from him. The Fitzgerald, remember they had done it to the Fitzgeralds earlier. They had destroyed them. Um, he essentially decided to play the Catholic card. It's kind of like playing the orange card. And he fairly cynically, actually, set himself up as the, the champion of the Catholic cause, the Catholic Church. And he persuaded uh, Red Hugh O'Donnell to do the same. And they sent emissaries to particularly Spain and to the Pope. And they set themselves up as the saviors of the... So they made it sectarian. They made it sectarian. They decided this is, this is what, how we need to protect our our power our powers 
allied themselves with the the Catholic powers and the Roman powers, the Roman power. 